All right, you're welcome back. It's still good morning, Anambra. And this morning we'll be looking at the 2022 Anambra State Education Digitalization Summit. Uh, if you're conversant with the education sector in Anambra State, you know that in the past eight years, the administration of Governor William Obiano has prioritized the issue of digitalizing education, teaching, and learning in our school system. The uh, success made in our education sector during the COVID-19 uh, era is still reverberating. You know the success story uh, using television and radio to reach out to uh, schools and students in different parts of the state. They're extending that success to continue and um, empowering teachers. Several trainings have been organized. Several trainings have been organized for teachers in Anambra State. How would this summit also help to extend the success stories is what we are going to look at this morning. I have with me in the studio Professor Kate Omenola, Commissioner for Basic Education in Anambra State. Good morning and welcome to Good the morning. Program. Thank you. And also Mrs. Chiu Nweke, Managing Consultant, Integral Development Consult, IDK, and also the chairperson of this summit. Good morning and welcome to the Good studio. morning. All right, let's kick off the discussion immediately. Um, Anambra Digitalization Summit. But before we get to the summit, um, go back in history. <laughs> For the past eight years, you've headed the education uh, sector in Anambra State. In 2018, you started manning basic education, basically. Uh, how has the story been for you as Commissioner for Education in Anambra State? Um, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I, I believe sincerely that the Anambra State Education family has had success stories all through. Mm. I give thanks to God for mm. uh, the guidance and for the inspirations in all the things we've done. I give, I give kudos to the governor of the state, um, Chief William Obiano, for the support. Um, I thank the uh, teachers, um, and my, our parasitals, and uh, everybody, our partners, who have actually helped us to think out and uh, do a whole lot of things. You know, the strategic objective of the Governor William Obiano Administration in Education is actually very clear, that this uh, learning needs of all must be met through equitable distribution of resources mm -hmm. and learning of lifelong skills and ensure we are one of the three top states with the lowest illiteracy rate. That is our strategic objective and that's what we have interpreted in all these years and giving flesh to those, uh, you know. And we look at education from three branched area, infrastructure, teachers' welfare, students' welfare. If you have that in your mind, that is what we have done all these years. Um, what does it mean when we say that the learning needs of all must be met? No child is to be left behind, you know? And we have our mantra and we say, nothing is impossible. I do not accept failure. Yes, we can. That is what we've done all these years. So how have we done that? Number one, the governor has done a whole lot of things in infrastructure. That is what we call the red roof revolution. You know, if you see any um, um, house that has a red roof in within our education system, that must have been done by Chief Dr. Willow Biano. Go around and look at using our suburb, all the renovations. In our 12 technical colleges, we have this mansion that people would never begin to imagine that it's actually a hostel for secondary school students in all the 12 technical colleges. We revamped the technical college because skills are so important to us. Mm. We run, what we run in Anambra State is what we call education for employment, E for E. And uh, what we have done is that we have developed our skills, the 36 trade subjects in our secondary schools, we've made sure that every child has a skill. You know, we've given our children international exposure, you know, they've uh, we, we achieved Dr. Willow be and I promise you mark one day and education that is globally competitive. And for that global competitiveness, we simply need to expose them to international competitions, you know. Um, the awards that our children have won all over Nigeria and uh, beyond, I mean, has reverberated all over. And um, that is something uh, that we, we, we have done to build the confidence of, of these children so that they can face their peers anywhere 
with confidence and they've all come tops. Talk about the children that went to Singapore and beat the Khartoum Convent School and they came back. One of my children, they all said, Mommy, in Aubrey Church, I woke up. Fasulo, he was to children of and they came back with the cup and they become the first. Talk about the original picture girls that went to Silicon Valley and came back with good. Talk about um, uh, the uh, uh, Allah, uh, 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 GTC Allah, yeah. St. John's uh, Science and Technical College Allah. They went to Tunisia and they came back with bronze, an international festival of engineering and sciences. You know, I'll talk about our children that they have, we have now in Anambra State for keeps uh, the debate uh, cop because we, for three consecutive years, we won the President's School Debate Championship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's been glory all through, and uh, um, our children have gone to Indonesia, they've gone to Singapore, you know, winning awards and coming back. I the same thing with uh, teachers, you know, in the, um, um, every 5th of the October is World Teachers Day, and uh, our, our consecutive from 2017, our, our, our um, teachers have gone to Abuja and brought back laurels. You know, 2017, Clement Okodo won the of our best teacher in Nigeria. Mr. President gave him, um, gave him a, a, a car. 2018, Amale Zengwa won the of our best administration in Nigeria. You know, she came back with, um, with uh, a car. 2019, uh, Sister Onwadi, Principal Amare Regina, won the of our best administration in Nigeria. She, she came back with a car. The same year, um, Flora Zikiwe won the of our best public school in Nigeria and they came back with a bus. And that was, uh, that 2019 was actually our biggest glory because we had the second best uh, teacher in uh, private school, Gabriel um, Zuebunam, um, and uh, Izuebu Samuel, the third best teacher in Nigeria, um, far away Uwele Zukala. You know, so, I mean, in 2020, the um, Gromville International School won the overall best private school in Nigeria. They came back with a bus. Uh, you know, 2021, uh, Bridget uh, Naduze won the, the um, overall best um, teacher in Nigeria and she came back with her car. I mean, it's just been, and plus all others, uh, Apoko Ugu Primary School in, uh, in uh, Ogidi came forth in the whole Nigeria. And uh, so on and so forth. So the point I make is that we have invested in our teachers. And uh, I remember Okodo in 2017, what made him be the Lagos counterpart was his uh, being computer survey. You know, so computer literacy was key. From 2015, we started to drive one teacher, one laptop policy. You know, we continue to drive it. We continue to. I remember in 2015 when we started uh, all this computer stuff. It was like, what's wrong with this woman? Does she think everybody is going to be a professor or something? Uh, that was when there were teachers. I always tell that joke. You know, the one of the teachers ran out at Igwebike when we were doing some of the training. Prof, prof. You know, we learned about seven windows today. So Windows 7, uh, it was fun. And this is what has, you know, transformed over the time. You know, from these teachers who talk about seven windows to teachers who have become transformational leaders. So that in 2020, when the, <laughs> when the COVID-19 pandemic, it was like, it looked like you saw the future. It's teachers were able to key in immediately. They started the teaching on, uh, they started the, using WhatsApp, they started using a whole lot of uh, uh, Microsoft uh, things to, to teach. Mm -hmm. They started doing uh, flipped classroom, you know. I mean, they became confident. They became people I call transformational leaders, you know. And I want to, in every sense of uh, um, humility and uh, responsibility, thank IDK, who has actually helped us facilitate a whole lot of things, teach and tech, you know, where we started to expand the knowledge of teachers in ICT. When we did our e-conference after COVID, the COVID-19, we said we talked about post-COVID education in Anambra State, challenges and the way forward. And the teachers participated in T4 conference, which was a global conference for all the teachers. More than 3,000 of our teachers participated in that. It was fun. They got a certificate at the end. It was fun. Teachers began to expand their horizon. They no longer think about Akabeke, Buedinta, Ibuefe. Those ones are important, Igbo language and that, but they, they needed to be global teachers. And that's where we are now. And I can assure you that over 75% of our teachers are computer literate now. Bec 75%. Yeah, over 75. And some of them already have, um, nearly 50% of them have Microsoft certification because we had to do a whole of Microsoft tests. And I remember in 2018, I think, when we did the 10,000 teachers uh, training 
uh, getting all the teachers, you know, it was like, they didn't imagine that was going to happen. There was a little bit of resistance, but I thanked the teacher there because they keyed in. Some of them had to pay some token to get themselves trained. I was able to convince them that, uh, I mean, if, if you cannot train yourself, what are you doing as a teacher? And for three weeks training, some of them paid uh, 2,000 for two, three weeks training. We partnered with Google in the last one week, in the last week. I remember when, when uh, Zainos, uh, Stan, Stan Eke came at the closing ceremony, he couldn't believe that a teacher who just learned computer in three weeks was able to use the language of computer. He ended up giving the, the, the lady, not even a young lady, I'm sure the lady is more than 50 something, you know, he gave him a laptop because she was speaking the language of computer. They've keyed in, they know the, what the, the, you know, the expectations. And um, I think one of the greatest um, uh, achievements of this administration is one, giving students confidence giving the students confidence, students can now move on to find competitions on their own, even competitions that are, you know, internet-based, comp competitions that are online, competitions that, I mean, they could go out and find these competitions and have their teachers guide them to actually come tops. Right. Teach, you know, and teachers themselves are more confident. Mm -hmm. They are global teachers, that's what I call them now. Uh, the Honourable Commissioner mentioned, uh, I also had the opportunity uh, to be, uh, to have participated in one of the trainings you had for teachers in Anambra, I covered for ABS, and I know you've played a very significant role when it comes to this digitalization process of the education sector in Anambra State. And what has been the response for you, especially from the teachers, in this uh, revolution that has been going on in our education sector? Thank you very much. Just like the Honorable Commissioner said, the Anambra State teachers have been quite amazing. I remember when we started the Tech and Teach. Tech and Teach was a program, or still a program, that you could do face to face. Mm -hmm. But because of the pandemic, because of the need for teachers to continue to teach students even while they were at home, there was no room for you know, physical contact teaching with the um, students. So we brought in Tech and Teach. And it was a program that the teachers did purely online. Learning, first of all, we tried to, you know, uh, give them the digital literacy, basic digital literacy. And then we now had to bring in how to design e-content, mm. e-content. And that e-content is not just the learning materials. It's not just the video production is there. The graphic designs were there. So they were able to learn online. We were not meeting with them face to face. All the programs were put out there in the, in the, in the online using a, a Google Classroom. And they were able to get in there. We were able to interact with them online. They were able to design e-content materials, they were able to deliver them online, mm -hmm. following the instructions online. And they were able to also upload to the different assignments. They were able to do peer group, you know, um, peer group uh, reviews and e-assessment, and also learn the different learning management systems. So that's one of the critical programs that was introduced by IDK mm -hmm. and her partner uh, um, uh, uh, builders, you know. So we were able to do that with the teachers. And I remember when we did the testimonials, a primary school teacher actually said she never knew in her life she would be able to do this. Mm -hmm. So it was quite uh, exciting that the teachers, the, the ones that, that you, because you could still get some who were finding it difficult. So we had to bring them in at IDK, observing the usual protocols, COVID protocols, to, you know, carry on. And immediately right there, they went online and finished their assignments. Mm -hmm. So IDK has really done uh, so much there. Our e-conference she talked about, the one we had at the um, break of COVID-19 
And actually, that program gave the teachers a lot of confidence. Really, after they did their T4, we said, we will do e-conference. It was an online e-conference. Everything was online. People called in from different uh, countries, and uh, the, the, the topic was the new normal, post-COVID-19 education in Anambra State. And we brought in a lot of people. People called in from US, UK, Abuja, Lagos to discuss. And it was the outcome of that e-conference, which even the commissioner, the Federal Minister of Education, called in from Lagos. I was so, you know, he, he didn't imagine that that would be possible during that, at the heart of COVID-19, mm -hmm. we did that program. And that was coordinated by IDK, partnering uh, Ministry of Basic Education. Commissioner is always, I mean, it's so amazing to work with her All because right. her ideas is so much. So that particular conference gave room to what we are preparing now. And that uh, summit that we're preparing now will be what we'll be getting into full discussion to understand the motive, the aim, and what it will achieve when it holds on February 24 and 25. We'll go on a short break now, we'll come back. The discussion here will continue. Stay with us. Make teaching easier. It will make learning more readily available for the students. And uh, it will help them for quick recall of what they have been taught. Because with the aid of computer, they can now easily access knowledge gained and the access also knowledge yet to be gained. So there is every value in the digitalization of education. We have so much to gain in digitalized education. One, it saves time. A again, today the issue of results, students going about to look at results. Before now, if you write jam, you wait for the like, kingdom come, the issue of missing script and all those things. Digital, uh, digitalized education has been taking care of it. As you are writing examples, uh, you have seen that some of the results you write through CBS, you are computer based text. You are seeing the result instantly and it's marking you. So, and it's, it also controls the issue of exam my practice. Because most of the times you do this is because it is computer based. The interference of somebody coming to interfere with your result and what you have been. So, there are some lecturers that will see you automatically, they don't like your face. But this business you're doing is with computer. So it takes care of that. There is so much more. What we have to gain is too enormous. Results are no longer withheld for a long time. You see our WIAC results are released in a question of months after taking it. Jambe results are released in a question of days after taking it. And um, even our school system results are all uploaded. You get to their website, you get your words or your son's or daughter's results. In digital education, everything is easy because you can easily do everything. Online class, online lectures. It's like when a student is given an assignment to type, you can submit it through the lecturer's email. Instead of going through the stress of going to print it out, then submitting it. Great news for Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS audience. You can now watch ABS television through any of these ways. Buy a terrestrial antenna and connect to your television. Search ABS Channel 24 Orca or ABS Channel 27 on each. Install Star Times Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 113. Install Metro Digital Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 29. Watch ABS TV on your smart TV. Ministry of Basic Education and Family with Integral Development Consult, IDK, to Innovative Africa announced the 2022 Alambra State Education Digitalization Summit and sets. The summit welcomes ICT and energy companies, teachers, educators, students, parents and digital entrepreneurs. Chief Host, His Excellency Chief Willie Obiano, the Executive Governor of Anambra State, Special Guest of Honor, Honorable Emeka Wajuba, Federal Minister for State, Ministry of Education. 
Education keynote speaker, Professor Obiezo Wesley, founder and chairperson, Board of School of Politics, Policy and Governance, and former Minister, Federal Ministry of Education. Date 24th to 25th February 2022. Venue IDK Learning Center, White House, in Wadisha Expressway, Oka. Time 10 a.m. daily. Registration is free at ansetsummits.com.ng or summit registration. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The summit is proudly sponsored by Dr. Chinedu Umadi Foundation, High Chief Napoleon Onyechi, Obo Desli Baba Royal Ambassador Foundation School, GGI International Limited, Oka Millennium City, and Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS. For inquiry and sponsorship, please call Buchi on 0029487353. And says, actualizing digital education in Anambra State. God bless Anambra. Welcome back to the program. It's still good morning, Anambra. And this, on this segment of the program, we are looking at the 2022 Anambra State Education Digitalization Summit. And I have with me in the studio Professor Kate Omenowa, Commissioner for Basic Education in Anambra State. Welcome again. Thank you. And also Mrs. Chiu Mwek, a Managing Consultant, Integral Development Consult, and Chairperson of ANSET Planning Committee. Good morning and welcome again. Thank you. And uh, we've been joined by Madab Chiokeke, founder of Innovative Africa, uh, here in the studio. They are one of the partners for the program. Good morning and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let me come back to you, Prof Professor Menova. Um, what is the driving force for this summit? You know, um, Chi was actually said that um, uh, the last time she. Uh, she mentioned that after we did the um, um, the new normal, yes, post-COVID education in Anambra said challenges and the way forward, uh, it was obvious to us that, um, you know, to move uh, beyond where we are and leapfrog into the future, there are key challenges that we need to address. You know, um, a question of access to connectivity, you know, access to the laptops and the, you know, the devices. Uh, there are people, children are living beyond the end of the road who do not have ac access to internet. Connectivity is a challenge. There are people, remember I said Dr. Willoughby and I talked about no child is to be left behind. If no child is to be left behind in the digitalization process, what it means that we need to uh, create um, the, the, the avenue and the template which we can use to address their biggest challenge, which is internet connectivity, mm -hmm. which is also access to devices. So this is what this um, summit is, you know, is going to address. Uh, mm -hmm. we, are, we, we are bringing you know, brands and uh, people who are internet survey, people who are ICT companies, people who are knowledgeable. Professor B.S. Equestley is giving the keynote and uh, trying to pull the uh, the um, uh, private sector in properly. This is something government cannot do alone. You know, we we'll have to we we'll able to pull these private people, you know, inside, and they'll be able to uh, think out ideas about how we can uh, work together to ensure that the issue of connectivity and access to devices are actually uh, addressed. That's also my worry when I saw about the summit. Uh, I felt how can, how will this implementation go so that the people who don't have access or who cannot afford it will not be excluded from the uh, ongoing, mm. uh, the kind of education system you want to see in Anambra? I mean, challenges everywhere, not uh, just, just in Anambra or in Nigeria, yes. you know, abroad, so many places, and there are people who have a whole lot of challenges, but these are gaps that need to be you know, filled up. You know, we are hoping that there are people who might be able to suggest what we are going to do in that person in Umwezanam, and that person mm. in Obofemili, that person in uh, the remotest part of Anambra, Abra, Anambra West, who do not have this access, how do we address them? What do we do? So this is the, the time for brainstorming. This is the time for partnership. This is the time for us to think 
and use the Igbo philosophy of our mm. you know, to address this. The child belongs to all. And if a child belongs to all, we need to be able to give these children that kind of support they need. You know, I mentioned in the radio session that uh, somebody, uh, somebody like, um, um, uh, I will remember his name now, somebody already gave eight, about 80 pieces of, uh, um, what do you call it? Yes, Android phones, you know, to give, and uh, we've given them out to some of the children that actually needed, needed that. You know, uh, the governor has actually um, uh, tried his best, you know, I mean, we gave out radio, radio sets when we are doing the teaching on air, but that is what we are doing now is just beyond that radio, mm -hmm. radio set, you know. So, um, so what we want to do is be able to, be able to pool, pool the resources that everybody has who can actually um, help and ensure that uh, this access, our uh, access issues actually addressed. All right. Mm. Um, Mrs. Mwenke, as the chairperson of that, uh, as the chairperson of this summit that is coming up, um, how, what are the things you are expecting to see from this conference? Yeah, our ancestors, that's the State Education Digitalization Summit. We have a two-day program. The first day, we are bringing in um, experts, uh, ICT, energy companies, mm. and uh, professionals in ICT to talk about the first thing we are going to look at is thematic discussion on digitalizing teaching and learning in Anambra State. What are the challenges and the way forward? Mm. Then we have four sub-themes for that day one. Commissioner has mentioned digital devices, access and affordable di digital devices for our students and teachers and schools. There are companies in those areas that are coming in, like HP will talk, Coscaris, mm. Is in, in preparing this, we now found out that Coscaris technologies mm. is on board. We never knew until now. Mm -hmm. So they're also speaking and other companies. Then we have the broadband internet connectivity. You know, if you have devices, you can't connect. Exactly. Yes, so we have companies coming under that mm. to speak about what they have, their unique services, how they can help an Ambra State to you know, have affordable and accessible internet connectivity. Then we have the um, energy, because we all know talk though about NEPA, EDC, alternative energy. So there are companies that have alternative energy supplies we are bringing in to tell us what they can do to make sure that those living beyond the end of the road and rural areas, even urban, how do they have constant electricity to be able to key into the digitalization agenda. And then we have the e-content. What are available there? How can we prepare our teachers to be able to produce their learning material? Not necessarily, there are those who already have that are going to tell us what they have. Mm -hmm. Then we're also going to talk our teachers being able to produce their own e-content e -content materials and e-assessment then learning management systems. You know, during COVID, a lot of uh, vendors, app vendors, you know, came up. Some of these schools are having issues with their apps. So we have very international um, uh, connect, you know, uh, people in, in learning management systems, portals mm. that will come to speak to us again. That is day one. Okay. Day two is where we are going to do what Commissioner have talked about before. We're having the One Student, One Laptop Initiative campaign launch. Okay. That we want to start discussing it and come up with a blueprint, how we can do it under PPP. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that UNICEF will play a role there. Mm -hmm. They say they want to come. That, you know, there's no money now. Money is moving towards other directions. Mm -hmm that they can come in and help uh, with private, you know, setting up the structure for that 
one student one and we have um, eminent Nigerians that will talk about it like the uh, president general Asatu she will be there also mm -hmm. your MD will be there and uh, people from the private sector associations mm -hmm. Will, private education associations will also be there. So these are a package. And we have the online. A lot of people will watch through our media channels. You know, the Facebook, the YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Why very few? Very few will be on ground there. So these are the package we have. Yes. Uh, All right. Let me bring you in, Madam Chokiki, who can participate beyond the stakeholders and um, partners that will be coming for this program. Who and who is qualified to be part of this conference and how can you participate? Um, okay, thank you very much. I think the summit basically uh, involves every stakeholder in the education sector. Mm -hmm. uh, in as much as we are trying to make sure we have fewer numbers on site okay. and then more numbers as much as we can carry online. So the person should just simply visit our website, ansitsummit.com.ng. Um, so once you go on the site, you see a click, uh, you see an icon for registration. You either register as a student, register as a teacher, or register as others. That's where you see others. That is where stakeholders and uh, can just sign up. Somebody called yesterday and was asking, um, can I come and participate? I said, are you a teacher? I said, no. I said, are you a principal? No. Are you a student? No. It's just a well-meaning individual in the stakeholder. So, I think such persons can participate, but we would appreciate to have uh, more persons joining us online than we have an on-site because we already have, you know, much persons who are already designated to be there mm. uh, on-site. So online is just to go on ansetsummit.com.ng and then the person could just follow suit and join. Okay, finally, Honorable Commissioner, the question I want to ask before we go will be, this conference or this summit is coming at the twilight of the state government. Uh, how do you hope to sustain this? And in 10 years' time, if the templates and blueprint you'll be preparing in this summit is implemented, where do you want to see the Anambra education sector? Well, um, my, our happiness actually is that we have an, uh, a GA, a governor elect, that is very passionate about education. Uh, Professor Charles Lodo is uh, very passionate about education, he's very passionate about education and technology is very passionate about uh, doing the right thing to leave frog in Anambra State into having an education um, that is not just productive mm. but is also exportable. So like uh, Chief Dr. Uluwebena has talked about giving no more one day Anambra education that is globally competitive. So our hope is that um, uh, this summit is preparing the bed you know, for the incoming administration. I mean, we'll, we'll write out our, um, uh, our, um, th our, our thoughts and uh, the, th the outcome of that uh, conference. We'll write them down and uh, give to the incoming administration to see how far we've done, gone with technology mm. in education and where they will probably, you know, continue from. So um, uh, it's part of our exit, <coughs> exit strategy, really. Mm. Uh, because, I mean, being eight years in office, I've said it, I'm not going to just pack my bag and go. I'll keep on doing the things that will keep on putting an umbrella set in the map. Um, so, yeah, 10 years from now, and you know, already we've started uh, robotics in our, in our public schools, artificial intelligence. So I'm looking forward to the time when uh, the next administration will expand on the 69 public secondary schools we started all the same with and they expand that all the schools and probably build uh, uh, robotics and artificial intelligence labs in all the schools and, uh, and make it you know, more functional than we would that we've made it, you know, we're able to make it now before our tenure expired. Mm. I'm also looking forward to the time when they will build on all the things we've done in technology for the teachers and then have more rigorous processes of recruiting teachers, you know, so that they'll know. I, you know, I've always told teachers that technology <coughs> may not replace teachers, but teachers who use technology will Ruthless. definitely replace those who do not. So I'm looking forward to a time when um, the next administration would make that reality come true, mm. that teachers will have no option than the key in. A more rigorous process of uh, recruitment 
And of course, I'm looking forward to the time where in our, um, in our um, teacher education, technology it becomes very prime. I mean, I get embarrassed when teachers who have gone to universities or gone to the College for Education tell me they're not computer literate. I mean, that's an aberration, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm looking forward to the time where we'll strengthen our teacher education and make sure that uh, they are keen in into the 21st century skills. You know, I'm also looking forward to the, you know, to the time when an Anambra, an Anambra teacher will have what we call an Anambra certified teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I will have an Anambra certified teacher when they can stand in the Committee of Nations and speak with confidence and do all the things that uh, these uh, um, international people are doing. And that's where we know that we are having education that is not just productive, but is also exportable. All right. Um, because of time, Mrs. Mwika, I want you to, in 30 seconds, advise our viewer why they should be part of that uh, summit holding February 24 and 25. That's tomorrow. Yeah, um, yes, tomorrow. <laughs> yes, tomorrow. Because I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, digital education is the new normal. Mm. And technology in education is the only way to go now. And that's the bedrock of this summit. Mm. And uh, so I enjoin everybody, all our teachers, teachers, teachers of Anambra State, our principals, educators, parents, students, mm. to please register online and be part of this program. Even after this program, after the summit, IDK is still there mm. to help teachers develop their ICT competence, their digital literacy competence, and do what Commissioner has just said. Because she has always said it, satisfied Digital and umbra <laughs> state certified digital teachers, and there's one we are even coming up with the super uh, Anambra uh, digital teachers. Mm. Yes, so these are the things we, we want everybody to key in so that we carry Anambra state to the next level in uh, ICT in education pedagogy. All right. Thank you. And this is the time. Uh, to take an umbra to that level when it comes to digitalizing our education in an umbra state. I've been speaking with uh, Professor Kate Omenowa, Commissioner for Basic Education, an umbra state, on the 2022 an umbra education digitalization summit starting tomorrow, February 24, and on Friday, February 25, 2022. Thank you for coming. Thank this you. This morning. Thank you. And also Mrs. Chiwen Wenke, Managing Consultant, Integral Development Consult, IDK, and Chairperson of ANSEED Planning Committee. Thank you for joining us this morning. And also Mr. Abuchi Okeke, Founder of Innovative Africa. He's also the Coordinator of ANSEED's Fundraising Subcommittee. Thank you for joining Thank us this so morning. Much. Thank you. All right, this is where we we'll call it a day on Good Morning, Anambra. So we'll come again tomorrow. I continue to remain safe. I am David of Wapasale. Ministry of Basic Education and Family with Integral Development Consult, IDK, to Innovative Africa announced the 2022 Alambra State Education Digitalization Summit and says, The summit welcomes ICT and energy companies, teachers, educators, students, parents and digital entrepreneurs. Chief Host, His Excellency Chief Willie Obiano, the Executive Governor of Alambra State, Special Guest of Honor, Honorable Emeka Wajuba, Federal Minister for State, Ministry of Education, Keynote speaker, Professor Obiezo Wesley, founder and chairperson, Board of School of Politics, Policy and Governance, and former minister, Federal Ministry of Education. Date, 24th to 25th February 2022. Venue, IDK Learning Center, White House, in Wadisha Expressway, Oka. Time, 10 a.m. daily. Registration is free at ansetsummits.com.ng or summit registration. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The summit is proudly sponsored by Dr. Chinedu Umadi Foundation, High Chief Napoleon Onyechi, Obo Desli Bagana, Royal Ambassador Foundation School, GGI International Limited, Oka Millennium City, and Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS. For inquiry and sponsorship, please call Buchi on 0029487353. And said, actualizing digital education in Anambra State. God bless Anambra.